Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 59 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, people send me in some of their best work and I critique each shot with suggestions on how they can improve it. And today I'm pleased to critique the work of Steve Ellis. And if memory serves, I critique some of Steve's work in the past. I'm not 100% sure because I've done so many critiques now, they kind of run together. But Steve sent me in some really nice shots. And let's get a look at it. Um, this first one here is a beautiful shot of the uh, mountains and the sky. We have the foreground element, with, which is the frost encrusted pine trees. It's uh, very nicely done. I, I really like this shot. We have a little bit of a tree poking out in this corner here. Probably just get rid of that if possible. A little bit over in here. Get rid of those. And it would be pretty much a perfect shot. This is a pretty nice shot too. Um, you know, we have the framing of the um, snow and frost encrusted trees uh, looking out over the mountains. Um, compositional wise, I see what he was trying to do. It's a little busy though because the framing is dominating the shot. Typically on a frame shot you want the frame secondary to what it's framing. So in this case the frame uh, is the dominant part of the image, not what we're actually framing. So this is one where I'd work the scene and see if I could utilize this framing because it's nice to show what the um, environment was like, you know, and it would be a, it's a good idea to get it framed. Steve had a great idea, but I would um, try to get a shot where the, it's not as dominant. It's a little more secondary to what's in the background. Another thing too, uh, it's very nicely in focused. Um, if you guys ever want to experiment and do st uh, stacked focusing, you need a f something like Photoshop to do it though. And that's where you take multiple images and you focus on uh, various points um, going out into the f uh, frame. So you'll have maybe you know 10 to 20 images and you're focused on one here and another here, another here, another here, and you're focused all the way to pretty much infinity and then you use a program like Photoshop to st stack them together and it, you get the entire photograph in focus and that's a neat effect and it would work nicely on something like this where you're trying to show what the environment was like but then sh still show the uh, the you know beautiful background that you're viewing. This is a nice shot. Um, these I've done shots like this before and it is kind of tough to really capture you know uh, with your sensor. Uh, when you're there it's kind of cool you know it's this like moss and grass and you know encrusted wall I guess encrusted is the word of the day. Um, we got you know it, it's nice it kind of records what he saw um, and um, for that instance you know it's perfectly done. I've done a zillion shots like this. I found interesting things on the outside of buildings and I photographed them and I've, I don't think I've ever photographed one where I actually liked the way it came out. In this case we have a, a nice interplay of the dark color of the horse and the white wall. Um, the, as far as the composition, I, I think maybe if you got in a little closer because the blank kind of look on the horse I think is something you could exploit. Get rid of this pipe over here. It looks like it's probably an old uh, fixture from an old gas lamp. So this is probably a very, very old building. And I'm not sure what's up in here. So you try to uh, minimize that also. It's a nice shot. Leading line of this, this uh, kind of a partial leading line of the road. It kind of helps lead your eye through the photograph. And you see the beautiful colors. A really nice sky. It's just a really nice shot. This shot here is interesting. Again, you're kind of showing the environment up on the mountain. Um, it's nice. It's it's now because it's so foggy and overcast, and everything is kind of um, dreary and and kind of shrouded in the fog. What you might want to consider is you take a part of the picture and you make it so it stands out a little more. And in this instance, I would make these foreground elements uh, stand out. So I would um, take a brush and I would um, put clarity all the way up. And I'd start there, I'd get a bigger brush to start with. And then what I would do is I would paint in some clarity on these um, stones that are in the foreground. 
And then I would even, because this is kind of the subject of the uh, shot, is this, um, I don't know what it is. It's shaped to, the way the ice is on it, it's like in the shape of a U. And um, it's obviously some type of wood uh, sign maybe at one time. I'm not really sure. So anyways, I would, uh, I would paint in some clarity here and I would add some saturation to it and then I would just experiment with the shadows a little bit and um, see I don't like what that did so I put that back um, I would add some contrast though and um, this is the before and this is the after and you see it kind of then is more of a gradual you know look going out into the misty background so it's just a suggestion you might something you might want to uh, consider trying um, sometime this here too I, I would try to do st a similar thing uh, again we're showing the environment probably at the very top of the mountain um, you know very cold very you're up in a cloud pretty much in this case I probably use a graduated filter I'd uh, reset it um, I turn clarity up, I bring saturation up, and I would go from the bottom up, and I would turn contrast up, and um, that's you know that's pretty much it I think. And then you could see the before and the after. It's just I think it adds a little more texture to the shot instead of making it so flat, unless you really wanted that flat look to begin with. But it's, generally speaking, when, when someone's looking at a picture, they do kind of like to see um, varying textures. Not always. It might be the effect you're going for. But in this case, we get this uh, various densities uh, to the shot. So it's something to consider. This is a pretty cool shot, too. I, Steve told me that um, he cropped it a different ways to try to get it, and he still he liked it best with this um, part underneath the doors in the shot and I would think I agree with him uh, that's one of the many uh, decisions you have to make as a photographer not only when you're framing the subject through the viewfinder of how you're going to actually frame the subject but then in post-processing maybe um, you could crop it a certain way to bring it out or make it more pronounced or to enhance the image somehow and um, how we do these steps makes us uniquely us so um, you know I might shoot this a wholly different way than Steve and maybe you know to my liking I maybe I liked it better but Steve didn't like it as much Steve liked the way he did it and so many people like the way Steve did it and maybe a couple people like the way I did it it's, it's decisions you have to make as a creative person and um, what I'm saying is don't be afraid to you know crop don't be afraid to try something different um, that that is how you develop your photography and this is an interesting shot yard waste and we got flowers growing out of it uh, pretty nice um, idea um, he shot wide open as much as he could so this would stand out from the blurred out background so technically it's a very nice shot this is a kind of cool shot I like the um, the processing in this shot um, it's just again uh, as I was trying to do with those shots up in the clouds we have this gradual um, like change from this more high definition uh, look down here where we could see more grades of gray more you know grades of sh the shadow as we move up here and it just gets starkly more black and white or black and gray is you know is what I should say so um, this is what I was trying to do to those misty shots, something like this. And I'm sure if uh, someone was really dedicated and worked on those misty shots better, they could do what I'm trying to explain a lot better than I was trying to show in this short video. We do have some vignetting over here in the corner that could be because of the lens, the, the wide-angle lens. It could be the um, lens hood on the lens. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, so it's a 135 millimeter lens and he shot it at you know at 135 millimeters so I'm not really sure what that could be over there. This is a very cute shot. Um, 
very well focused. I always, I always talk about always make sure that you focus on the eyes and Steve did a, a great job here. Now the processing, the eyes are very dark and the eyes are kind of, they really are the windows to the soul and you want to um, do your best to make the eyes as striking as possible whenever you do a portrait and in this case because they're so dark it it just it looks um it lo it, it just doesn't look alive it looks kind of um scary in a little bit of ways i don't mean that in a disrespectful way i just mean that as far as the eyes being so dark so what you would want to do is now i have lightroom videos that explain how to do the, all this so if you guys were ever interested in um learning how to use Lightroom and do the things I'm doing here. You can check out those Lightroom videos. So what I would do is I would simply take a brush and I would turn up exposure and I would paint in some brightness right in her eyes. Now I overdid it a little bit over here. And um, something like that um, might be a little bit too much. We could just back it off just a touch. And we could add a little clarity. You don't want to add too much clarity because it starts looking like alien eyes. But I think that adds some more um, life to the shot. It makes it look a little more realistic. We even just turn that, tweak it a little bit right around there. So we have the before and the after so you could see what I'm talking about and be sure you check out those Lightroom videos if you're wondering how to do all this stuff on Lightroom. This is a really nice shot. Now if I remember correctly um, Steve was saying that he doesn't like his shots really saturated. He likes his shots um, a little desaturated and you know that's um, a distinctive style that I always encourage everyone to try to develop your own style and in this case here you know it's it's almost selective color. We have some color here and we do have some tiny bit of color in the shot. And um, it's really well done. I really do like this shot. We have this um, leading line leading us out to the boat. Um, really nicely done. I really like this shot. Now in this shot, I don't know if this was a mistake. He sent it with me, he sent it to me or he wanted me to show how he developed it in color. Um, this is very nice too. You really get to see the uh, color in this marsh area that really is striking color. But of the two, I actually, I think I like this one better. But you know, that's six of one, half a dozen of the other. We all have different tastes and someone might like the color shot a lot better than the, um, the more monochrome shot. This, you know, there's shots like this, we, we're presented with this all the time. You're kinda in between. Um, now we got part of this crane cut off down here. Now if you wanted to shoot the crane, I suppose you could go vertical, all right, and you could get all the crane in, but then you're losing a lot of the environment that the crane is in, so you're losing the context of what the crane is there for, what it's doing. If you back way up, so you could get all of the crane in, and you get more of the um, surrounding area around the crane, you kind of lose the subject of what the crane, you're, you're, you know, you're taking a shot of the crane. So this is a lot of times you're uh, betwixt in between, you know, you're, you're, you could get closer and get like, you know, shoot vertically and get the crane to just dominate the image and then you don't really know what the crane's there for. Or you could back way up and just make it more of a landscape image and, you know, well, there's a crane there, big deal, you know. So it's kind of a hard shot to accomplish. This shot is, is really a, a very striking shot. Um, this really is, it's like layers of photos. We have this front part, very bright. We have this middle uh, part, very dark. When you have this upper middle part that gets brighter, and then we have this very gray part up where the clouds are. So it's a really, really cool shot. And this is like I talked about where you have textures in a shot, and you have different varying elements to contribute to the whole. And um, it's a really nice image here. 
And I think that's it actually for Steve. And I'd like to stake, uh, thank Steve for sending me in his images. I really enjoyed uh, critiquing him. Steve's a really cool guy. I got to know him a little bit through emails and stuff. And um, he's a very, as you can see, a very, very good photographer. And I um, uh, hope uh, he keeps pursuing his new, I think it's a relatively new hobby if I remember. And um, I hope he keeps pursuing it because obviously he has a lot of talent. And um, again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos. I uh, really appreciate it. And if you guys could go over to my website and see all the stuff I have over there on photography to help you with your photography. And if you haven't already, go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.